We're going to be having a look at the cells of the immune system and how they interact with each other in order to fight off an infection once it's already there inside the body. Let's start by having a look at what happens first. The pathogen enters the body. Pathogens are covered in surface antigens, identifying it as being foreign, non-self. The body knows it does not belong to it and it needs to do something about it. So what happens here are patrolling phagocytes, there's one with its lobed nucleus, recognise and engulf these, ingesting them to remove them from the body. However, an infection such as influenza has far too many viruses for them all to be removed in this way, and they do in fact end up infecting the host cells. When a pathogen enters a body cell, it, it is trying to be fought off by these lysosomes. This can damage it, which results in fragments attaching to the body um, cell's membrane. These cell membrane um, fragments can be really useful, acting as a distress signal and calling for backup from the other immune cells. It also indicates that it is an infected cell and must therefore be destroyed by the T killer cells. There we are. So let's look at these cells in a bit more detail. We've come a long way from just saying that the immune system is made up of white blood cells uh, to fight off infections. And these are all of the white blood cells that we're going to be looking at uh, that play important roles in this process. Let's begin by having a look at macrophages. Uh, a special kind of phagocytes, uh, they're found in the lymph nodes and will engulf pathogens once they are identified as foreign by those antigens. And instead of completely destroying them, like most phagocytes do, they will display antigens on their surface. They are a form of antigen presenting cells. As well as this, the macrophages also release things called cytokines, which are chemical messages that instruct other things to happen. Two types of cytokines, one's popped up already, monokines, which attract neutrophils by a process called chemotaxis, um, and interleukins, uh, which both have a role in stimulating B and T cells, which we'll talk a bit more um, about in just a moment. Macrophages also produce a cytokine called histamine. Histamine is also released from mast cells and basophils, causing the inflammatory response. Why you feel all itchy um, and get a runny nose if you're suffering from hay fever. Histamine attracts neutrophils, by, again by chemotaxis, and causes the capillaries to become leaky. This means the site of the infection becomes filled with tissue fluid, often why you will see swelling if you have an infected cut, and results in the microbes, the pathogen, moving slightly closer to the lymph nodes, which is where those precious macrophages are found. So antigen presenting cells are vital, ensuring that the correct T cells are produced. T cells are made in the bone marrow where they travel uh, to the thymus so that they can mature. Easy to remember, T for thymus. Once the antigen has been presented, the clonal selection process will take place. This is just a step ensuring that the correct T cell has been picked. T cells have receptors on them that will only respond to one antigen. Once it's been selected and it's correct, it will rapidly divide by mitosis in a process called clonal expansion, literally cloning itself repeatedly so that there are lots of them. There are different types of T cells, all with very different, well, slightly different roles. T killer cells will kill. Um, as its name suggests, the infected body cells mainly. So as we spoke about at the start, the infected body cell sends out this distress signal saying that it's been infected and the T killer cell goes up to it, injects it with hydrogen peroxide and um, stops any more infections spreading. We've also got T helper cells as um, is written there. They're really important in helping the other cells um, to proliferate, mature, especially the B cells and the phagocytes. So T helper cells cause an increase in the number of B cells and phagocytes in the infection. Finally then, we have T memory cells, and their job is to remain in the blood uh, for a number of years in order to speed up the response 
of a second infection uh, if that were to happen. Moving on to B cells then, and the other type of lymphocyte that we've got. Made and mature in the bone marrow. So just like the T cells, they're made in the bone marrow, but they stay there. B cells, bone marrow. Once stimulated by the T helper cells, they begin this selection process as well. Interleukins also stimulate the production of B cells, as was mentioned earlier when we were talking about the fact they are secreted from macrophages. There are two types of B lymphocyte that are produced once we've been selecting the correct one and they've then clonally expanded by mitosis once again. And these are plasma cells and memory cells. The B memory cells, just like uh, the T, T cells, remain in the blood for several years so that in the future, if an infection happens again, the antibodies that have been produced by the plasma cells can happen a lot quicker and the infection can be fought off before causing too much damage. Let's have a look in a bit more detail at the plasma cells, those B lymphocytes that are producing antibodies. So here is an antibody. Plasma cells are the ones that produce these. Remember, these are specific to the antigen and it does take quite a bit of time for them to be made. We've got the variable region there, which will bind to the antigen. And as its name suggests, this is the one that changes every time there is a different antibody. The very important hinge region in the centre here, essential, so that a couple of antigens or a couple more of pathogens can bind to the variable region at the same point. Once an antibody has bound to a pathogen, it becomes immobilised and therefore is unable to enter a host cell. They can also cause the agglutination of several pathogens together, making it a lot easier for phagocytes to remove them all in one go. And the antibodies can also specifically target the bacterial cell walls, resulting in cell death. Let's just then put all of those cells into their roles within the immune response. So at the very, very start of the immune response, you can see there is a bit of a time delay. And this time delay is a question that's often asked um, in exam papers, but it's also a very important part of the immune response. Time is taken for several things to happen. First of all, the antigens to be presented. So once the host cells have been infected, they've got to present the antigen first of all. It then takes time for clonal selection and clonal expansion of the correct cells. The B cells then have to differentiate into plasma cells, and it, once that has happened, the correct antibody must be produced. And only when there are memory cells and a second exposure of an antigen will this be a lot faster. So all of these cells that we've talked about play a really important role in this immune response, and without um, them, we would die. There we are.